Well, we're on live on Facebook. I forgot to put my jacket on. I'm going to get it. I've got a... I've got a very fancy church. I have my wardrobe closet right behind my pulpit. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'll bet you it ain't a preacher in the world has a wardrobe closet right behind their pulpit, huh? <laughs> <Can't be sad. laughs> well, I'm going a different direction. Sorry, Billy Joe. I'll talk about David a little bit. Go to Acts chapter 2. In your Bible, Acts chapter 2. If you got a pew Bible, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts chapter 2. Now, Acts chapter 2 is the beginning of the New Testament church. In the New Testament, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. What are, uh, what, what are those called? They're called the Gospels. Uh-huh. And then the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the history of the New Testament church, which we ought to be practicing today. It's the history of the church. Uh, the Holy Ghost came. And when the Holy Ghost came, it, uh, it, it the people were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what we're looking for. And I told Brother Pruitt, this morning, and I'm changing, I'll, I'll be getting back to David, and I'm getting back to the blood of Christ, but, so I'm going to have three, three different things today, but that's okay. I'm not the kind of preacher that, that has a, has one subject, and uh, has three points, and all, all the points got the same, uh, uh, letter. Good to see you this morning. Glad you're here. But the second chapter of Acts, Peter, remember Peter? Remember Peter when Jesus was baptized? You know, Peter was a big mouth braggart. How many of you ever known a big mouth braggart? They, you know, they just tooting their horn all the time. He says, boy, he even in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know what Peter done? He took a sword and Cut the ear off a soldier. You know what Jesus done? He healed his ear. He said, I got to go to the cross. And Jesus told his disciples, y'all going to forsake me. Now they were saved. How many disciples did he have? Twelve. How many of them forsook him? One. Remember what his name was? Judas. Judas, yeah. Judas forsook him. He was replaced at the end of Acts 1. Who, who, who replaced him? Matthias. Matthias replaced him. You never heard of Matthias. Someone said that uh, they drew lots and Matthias won the lot. Drew straws on him. And... Uh, he was replaced, but he was never talked much about. Someone says that he really wasn't not. God don't make no mistakes. He was the one that was chosen. Matthias was. But anyway, you know what Peter told all his disciples? He said, y'all going to forsake me. I oh, wasn't just talking about Judas. What did what, what Judas do? He was what? What was Judas? He's the devil. He sold him out for death. He put he placed uh he 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 put the kiss of death on Jesus. Remember what devil he come to kiss he kissed him on the cheek? You know the mafia got that from the Bible. Did, did you ever hear sometimes the mafia uh, he'd give one of his boys that he don't like just right, he'd give him because he's kisses on the cheek and and they, and they say we're going to a meeting. And then he'd give somebody a kiss, a kiss on the cheek, and he'd do like he did in that. Uh, I don't know why I took, I took this funny. I guess it wasn't so funny. But remember, I really, it's kind of a worldly movie. 
there's something intriguing about the mafia, isn't there? A lot of people like, you know, don't know about the mafia. And I watched that movie, uh, I think it was, it was on television, Sopranos movie, maybe it was. But the fat guy that was the boss, he had a guy that was his wheel man, and he was driving, and he had a guy sitting behind him. And, <laughs> Hey, don't be stealing my punchlines, Donnie. I'm going to do the talking. I'll do my own punchlines, you understand? <laughs> the guy in the back seat kills the wheel, man. And the, the fat boss gets out. He tells the other guy, don't forget the cannolis in the back seat. I always thought that was funny. It wasn't very funny to just kill the guy. You know? But, but the, you know, the mob, they stuck together. But then if something didn't just go right, you were gone. Don't forget the cannolis. I never forget it. Now, Judas betrayed the Lord. But the other 11 did what? They forsake him. They're backslidden. What? Remember what Big Mouth Peter said? When Jesus told him, he says, oh, I'll never forsake you. Now, do you remember who it was that was reported very carefully in the Gospels? Do you remember who it was that they reported of their actions at the, when the cross was there? Who's, uh, whose actions did they report so carefully? Peter's. Who was Peter of the, of the 12? He was the boss man. And he forsook the Lord. And he, and you know what Jesus told him to his face? He said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. The boss, that was the boss of his disciples. How many years were they in training? Three years. Three years. And the boss man, Peter, big mouth, braggart, like a lot of people, I'm, you run across them, they're everywhere. Try to boost yourself up. We have, we have a tendency in one. Uh, have, let me ask you this question. Have you personally ever tried to make yourself look a little better than you really are? Well, sure, we all have. That's just called human nature. We want to we wanna make us look a little better than we are, huh? Yeah. And some people really go overboard. They go nuts over with it. That's the way Peter, uh, Peter was. Petros, Peter. And he forsook him three times. And you know what he did at the end of his forsaken Jesus? Cursed and swore. Cursed and swore. Any of you ever cursed since you've been saved? Shame on you. Shame on you. Remember what the, the old rugged cross third verse said? Sanctified. Set apart. You know what we got today? You know why there's no revival? You know why... We're not having, you know, why we're not having services all day, every day, and through the night, and 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 people uh, don't want to go home and want to keep. Uh, there's revivals. You read history. You read. You read Acts chapter two here, like I told you. Well, look, look, let's pick it up, verse forty-one, Acts two. Then they that gladly. Received his word, the Bible, the King James Bible, had a different name back then, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Can you imagine that in a local church, 3,000 souls being saved and baptized in the same day? Do you think that could ever happen today? I think it could. It did happen. It happened in Hammond, Indiana. 
my dear friend, my close friend, Jack Howells, who's in heaven now, on a given day, his church, get, get this, he used to regularly baptize five, 600 people every Sunday. He made a special push and had auxiliary meeting places all around the Chicago area. And in one Sunday, First Baptist Church of Hammond, pastored by my good friend, Jack Hiles, who was my mentor, my friend. In one day, they didn't baptize 3,000. You say, oh, it was less than that. No, it was more. Was it four? No. Five? No. Seven? No. Eight? No. On a given Sunday, First Baptist Church of Hammond, at their church and auxiliary churches, all over the greater Chicago land area where there's some black, I forget how many millions and millions of people, the greater Chicago land area, one of the biggest metropolises. It might be the biggest with the suburbs of any. It might be bigger. I, no, I think no, New, New York could be bigger with Jersey and all them that are around them right there. New York and the, the, the suburbs of New York would be bigger than Chicago, but Chicago would be. Over 10,000 people saved and baptized. Isn't that something? Well, glory. We need the power. I've seen the power in the past. I got a big building here now God's given me. This building's paid for. It's nice property. And we've got a nice property, don't we? It's a nice building. We ain't, we ain't filled it up yet. Look, at we ain't, our seats ain't filled. Just This ain't a big auditorium. In Milwaukee, we used to have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 bigger auditorium, 1,250 seat auditorium. We'd fill it up several times on a Sunday. What's the difference? Hey, what's the difference between 3,000 being saved and baptized and added to the church? What's the difference in our church and other churches today than Jack Hiles' church that regularly baptized every Sunday five, 600 people and on a given day, they made an effort and had auxiliary meeting places all over the Chicago land area and got saved and baptized over 10,000. What's the difference? The power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm a Baptist preacher, and I don't apologize for it. I'm an old-time independent King James Bible. I'm a Baptist preacher. I'm not ashamed of the word Baptist. A lot of Baptist church, they changed the name of this church from Baptist before I took it. The, the preacher before here changed it to, and this is common today, Holly Hill Community Church. Oh, Ridgewood Avenue. Ridgewood Avenue Community Church. The first Sunday I was back here, the church voted, voted me in unanimous decision. The first thing I brought up well, that says, we're going back to our roots. In 1924, this church was started by an old-time hellfire and brimstone King James Baptist preacher. And his name was Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church. It started in the house on Ridgewood Avenue. And we took the name of our roots. It's on our... Oh, we got a, you see our sign outside flashes off and on? It's a nice sign. The city even, God, thank the city. Well, it wasn't really the city. It was a, a community. Uh, they, they help you pay for stuff. And uh, they paid for half of that sign. Uh, CRA, I guess. It's a, it's a re you know, you get money from... Uh, Anyway, uh, someone says, "Well, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take no money from them." Well, they'll take it from them. some Baptists wouldn't have took their money. 
There's no strings attached. I'll take people's money if there ain't no strings attached to it. Why not? I've taken money. I've taken, I've taken a million dollars in Milwaukee from a lost man and not winked an eye, grabbed the check quick, said thank you. I wouldn't take no money from government or uh, if there ain't no strings attached. Now the lawyer look at it close. And uh, so, but anyway, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Forte and, and City of Holly Hill. And Mr. Forte was behind that and he helped me get it. And uh, whoever his helpers were, he's city manager. He runs, he's in charge of the city and he's doing a good job actually, I believe. But anyway, um, Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church, that's what we are now. And on our sign, it says Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church established 1924. Did you know that they changed the name from Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church to First Baptist Church of Holly Hill? How many of you remember when it was at First Baptist Holly Hill? And it used to be the biggest Baptist church in Volusia County. Did you know the room we're in right now used to be a Sunday school room? And they had an 850-seat auditorium out here where the uh, uh, space is out here. It burnt down in 2001. The pictures, I got it on the wall. The pictures are still there. You go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom, uh, the, the men's and women's bathroom right on the hall over here. The picture across the street of where it burned down. You can see it if you haven't, if you haven't uh, seen it late. But this, this Sunday school used to run 1,500. In Sunday school, for when it was First Baptist, I think back in the 50s, 60s, whatever, it was the biggest Baptist in in the county. People were getting saved. I, I I know people that are preachers that got saved in this church, missionaries and things. They, they call back and things, and they did. And, and uh, uh, but why? Why why you think they had 1,500 in Sunday school? Holy Ghost power. Why do you think I had more than that in Sunday school in Milwaukee in 2000 sometime, 3000? Why? Holy Ghost power. We can do it again. Who can do it? God. I told Brother Pruitt this morning. I says, revival breaks loose over here. Call me over. I'll bring me over with my people. Maybe they'd get stirred. If you know if the Holy Ghost power breaks loose, you know what? You ain't... I'll finish preaching here now. Listen now. You won't go home and watch television. You'll stay and pray. Go out here in the parking lot and win souls. Go to door to door knocking on the neighbors. Trying to get them saved. Like it was here in Acts chapter 2. And they that gladly received his word were baptized through the one. And they were the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts chapter 2. Verse 41, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly. Think about that. What does it mean to be steadfast at something? They stayed at it. They stayed at it. That's what people want. They want someone that's, that's steadfast. They want a good worker, like you see. Thank God, what's this? It looks like you've taken a hard fall. I didn't fall. If I hit down this stupid smartwatch, it don't call 911 for me. Emergency, SOS, I'm okay, I'm okay. I right, don't bother me no more. Provide some details, no, I'm okay. Stupid smartphone, smarter than I am. Anytime I hit the pulpit, that it goes off like that. I usually take it off. I didn't do it. But you see, Wawa, we got we got a guest, Peyton, here from Wawa today. And, uh, you know, uh, Peyton, when she works at Wawa, she's like a dart. She goes, choo, 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 choo. she's fast as lightning. And she's, she's very nimble on her feet. And she's over here doing this and doing that and, and the next thing and and I see her over there and I'm only there a few minutes just enough to get the stuff. A lot of times she loads stuff up for us and she told me she'd come to church. Thanks for coming to church today, Peyton. And, and she's here, praise God, I'm glad. 
But you know what Wawa likes about Peyton? She's steadfast. She's keeping at it. You know, you know what? You know what a boss is looking for in a place? He's looking, looking for someone that doesn't just do what they're supposed to, but goes above and beyond. You understand what I'm saying? That's called steadfastness. That's called, and that's where you get promoted. And that's where you get a raise, huh? The steadfastness. They that gladly received his word were baptized, same day as Adam 3000, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What was the apostles' doctrine? The Bible. The Bible. If you've got a King James Bible in your hand. Now, another thing I like about Peyton, she comes to, uh, to church with a Bible in her hand. Amen. Did your grandpa give you that Bible? From grandpa. <laughs> she had Bob. She brought Bob. She had a little Bible, Pastor. Yeah. Grandpa. You see, a lot of times, Grandpa. I'll give Bible. I'd, I'd give Bibles to my grandkids too. Yeah. Yeah. And she come, you know, I told you, you know what the problem is today? People don't take a Bible to church. And I, I'm going to say this again. You say you're beating a dead horse. I might be beating a dead horse, but most churches you go to in this city, this, this is our pew Bible. King James Bible. This, this is my pulpit Bible. It's bigger. It's got big print on it. That's why, I, if I use this big, bigger print, I don't have any, I don't need no glasses when I when I'm reading this bigger print. But Peyton's Bible, smaller print, but she's young, got a good eyes. She probably read it, don't have no trouble. But uh, I need glasses. Uh, Michelle, she needs glasses, and she won't tell me what kind it was. She says she can't read the Bible or sing. Donnie, we got any 2.5 back there? Probably not, huh? Uh, we got some back there. We, probably, we got some strong ones back there, yeah. My eyes are brand new, so I probably shouldn't wear reading glasses. I think, I think we tried the, heart, the heavy ones on her. She, I think she don't take that heavy. I don't know. Either. She needs glasses so she can read. Because... They could it's in the Apostles' Doctrine. That's the Bible. We got a bunch of churches today that have no Bible. Everybody goes to church, no one got a Bible. Peyton come to church today. She figured you go to church, you got to have a Bible. She brought a job Bible. Ain't no one carried Bible. Sad, sad to say. David brought a Bible. Some of you, you ought to have a Bible. It's your Bible, and you ought to bring it to church. You use the same Bible, Donnie, you always use? Yeah. All right, that's good. Oh, yeah. I got mine marked up. Yep. A lot of people come in here to church. Yeah. Jake, you got a Bible? Yeah. Is that the one you carry around, huh? You want to read the Bible with Jake? He reads with me all the time. He pulls out of his backpack. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know, used to be a common thing in the church. Everybody had a Bible. And when you was little, how many of you, when you was little, you went to a church where you read the Bible in Sunday school and everybody read the Bible, had different Sunday. Did you do it at church? Did you do it? I did it in church. And you memorize. Anybody here know the books of the Bible? Anybody here know the books of the Bible can repeat it to me in order. Six, six books of the Bible. 39 in the Old Testament. 27 in the New. And this is my church. And I encourage you all the time. Any one of you in here today that can stand up and tell me the 66 books of the Bible, which every Christian should know. Yeah. yeah. 
$20 bill. Stand up, say six, six books in the Bible. Don't read it. Just tell I'll give you $20 bill. Memorize it by next week. I'll give you $20 bill. I'm, that's, I'm giving you a head start on that. I'm going to have some people coming out of the bushes from out there that know the books of the Bible. <laughs> then I'll embarrass them. <laughs> and they'll have to say they had memorized them before. I just, we should, uh, Jake, Jake and, uh, Jake and stand up for this. We just took some things for Brother Pruitt to give out. He gives stuff out to his church too, needy people, Faith Baptist. We drove by another church, not Brother Pruitt's. And there was a guy in there that was at our church for a little while. How many of you remember Dennis? The autistic boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dennis. Yeah. We just seen him. He, he said he wanted to go. He liked that church all day. Oh, that's okay. Find a church you like. But you know what? You know how long it took Dennis to memorize the books of the Bible? Two hours. Whoa. You know, autistic. Anybody ever been around an autistic person? Yeah. They're, they're different in a lot of ways. But in other ways, they're absolutely brilliant. You, have, you, have you seen that? It's autistic people like that. And he had the capacity to memorize the books of the Bible. Now, the reason you don't know them is because you're lazy. Oh, I just see people all the time. You know every word to every popular song, and you, and you memorize a whole bunch of stuff that you like, but you can't memorize the books of the Bible. You see, in God's church, I'm not talking about a Baptist church. I'm talking about in Pentecostal churches. I'm talking about in Methodist churches. I'm talking about in Presbyterian churches. I'm talking about in every kind of a church that used the King James Bible, that they used to memorize the books of the Bible, and they used to memorize the Bible, and, 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 and they used to memorize how to get people saved, Romans Road, and on and on. The devil has ruined us. Yeah. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread. And you know what it means here by breaking in bread? It's the Lord's Supper. Huh? Lord's Supper. There's only two two ordinances of the church. You know what they are? Anybody know the two ordinances of the church? Believers' baptism. We have a baptistry up here. Several of you have been baptized at our church. You get saved. You make a public declaration of your salvation. Public declaration of your salvation by being baptized. And then we take the Lord's Supper. The first Sunday of the month, we take the Lord's Supper. Now, I've been delinquent in not having it sometimes lately. And that's a shame. Now, you don't have to take it first Sunday. You can take it. Some people take the Lord's Supper once a month. We do. On the first Sunday. That's once every four months. But some take it once a month. Some take it every Sunday. But it's remembering the death of Christ. That's what the Lord's Supper is all about. And he initiated it in the Gospels. Fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. You know, we got out on our we got two signs out in front. One's a neon sign. I'm gonna put it up on there too. But on the on the solid sign, there's words up there. They're the same all the time. It says House of Prayer. We better start doing it. I better quit lying. And get it down, huh? Huh? All right. We're coming at six tonight to pray. The one that said, "Yup." All right, Donnie's coming. Who else is coming for prayer at six? 
All right. Jenny's coming. Yeah, no, Je Jenny pray. Anybody else coming at six to pray? You heathen backsliders. Maybe it's because you ain't saved. If you ain't saved, you, you got nothing to pray about. You got to get saved today. Some of you need to get saved today. Billy Joe's nervous. He's fingering that Bible now. He's nervous. Yeah, he got. I know. I'm he sorry. got. It. He got his favorite television show. He gonna. Oh, oh, he gonna tell it gets dark. It don't get dark till eight o'clock, Billy Joe. Huh? 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 Yeah. Huh? You better get yourself over here at six o'clock prayer meeting. Don is coming. Love the way you think about that. You've been coming to church pretty regular. How about six o'clock prayer meeting today? Huh? You coming? Huh? You got what? You think it's more important than the prayer meeting? No, well, you come to prayer meeting then. Huh? I hope you make your decisions, folks. Peyton gonna get saved this morning. I've been praying about it. You Peyton gonna get saved? Not. Nah, I can't get saved for you, but you get. I think she's ready to get saved. Yeah. Anybody else here need to get saved this morning? You ain't been saved yet. Anybody else? Oh. Huh? You see, Peyton's honest. She told me she ain't saved yet. You need to say. That's the first thing you need to do is be honest. I didn't ask her about her grandpa. Sounds like he's saved. Yeah. Give her a Bible. Yeah. Grandpa will give you a Bible. Mama can take you to church. Daddy could take you to Sunday school. But ain't nobody to get saved for you. you Got to get saved on your own. Amen. Huh? Been saved? Are you sanctified? Huh? Set apart. I'll read you. We'll talk about some great revivals. Tonight we'll pray and talk about the Welch revivals. And the revivals in New York with Jonathan Edwards. Was Jonathan Edwards a great Baptist preacher? No, he's a Presbyterian. He's a Presbyterian. All Presbyterians can't have revival. Yes, they can. Gen uh, John Edwards, uh, Jonathan Edwards uh, was a Presbyterian. He was the president. But Charles Finney had the revival. Edwards had a little revival, but not like Finney. You see, I don't think this, this don't affect my watch. <laughs> see, if the Holy Ghost comes with power this morning, we ain't going to want to go nowhere. We'll put the food back in the oven. No, we'll put the food back in the icebox. And we'll keep praying, testifying, saying glory to God. Billy Joe might even stand up and do a couple of laps around the auditorium. <laughs> yeah, that would be a miracle. That huh? would be a miracle then. Verse 4 to 3. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. What kind of wonders and signs were there? People got... Jake, people with cirrhosis of the liver got healed. Jake's got cirrhosis of the liver, stage four. He got right with God here. Coming up on upon a year about now, isn't it now? Pretty close? Yeah. Yeah. But he drank most of his adult life. Fried his liver, huh? 
you get stage four cirrhosis of the liver in reality, and Jake knows this, it's, it's about time you're going to cash it in. But God could heal him completely today. That's right. He's had... He's had great improvement in the last couple of days, really. Haven't you, Jay? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good enough for John Wesley. He was a Methodist. It was good enough for John Wesley. He was a Methodist. Millions were saved. You know what happened with John Wesley? They threw him out of the state church. Back in England, they had a state church. They wouldn't let him preach in the church he was raised in, Presbyterian, or no, no, it wasn't Anglican Church, Church of England. They wouldn't let him preach inside. You know what he did? He went out in the backyard stood up on his daddy's tombstone <laughs> and preached. And he had audiences 10 times bigger than could get into church. You know what happened? The Church of England didn't want revival. So Jonathan Edwards, no, not Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, who's a Calvinist. And John Wesley, who was Armenian. They had so many people. They didn't have no amplifiers. No, I don't have none here. I just preach. I got a loud voice. The church ain't building ain't that big. But they preached to thousands and thousands of people. You know how they did it? One to get at one end of the crowd and the other would go way to the other side of the crowd. And they'd preach towards the middle. That's what they did. They had so many people, and if you just had one guy talking with no microphone, you couldn't hear him. So they put one guy on each side and preached towards the middle. <laughs> Whichever one you could hear, that's when, and they loved it. Spirit of God descend on us. What's that song you sing, Billy Joe? I, I sent you a quartet singing it. Uh, which one is that? The, uh, About the Holy Ghost. Honey Go. Wasn't that? Hmm. Read about how. No. The sin. Spirit. Oh, wow. First I heard of a people who claim. Old time religion was real. I said, I'll go down. Sing la. Take a look at the crowd. They're just weak minded, <laughs> I feel. I walked up the steps and looked in at the door. The devil said, Don't you go in. I said, It won't hurt me. I'll just step inside. And I said, As far back as I can. But something got a hold of me. Yeah. Praise God. Something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, God certainly got a hold of me. Yeah, that's enough. Something got a hold of me. What's that other song you sing about the Spirit of God coming down? Uh, well, you just sir. I believe in the Father. No, that ain't it. I, I just want to say it. Well, with the, I'll think about it, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll get it in a minute. Uh, and all... And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Healings and devils being cast out. All sicknesses of the devil. Death, hell, that's all of the devil. And they sold their possessions and goods. And parted them to all men as every man had need. Well, we ain't seen none of that going on, have we, huh? That's pretty... Pretty serious stuff when everybody's selling their junk, their worldly junk, and buying food for people, huh? Selling their second and third car and feeding people and preaching, huh? Verse 46, listen now. 
And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread. That's having the Lord's Supper. Now, some say it when they were eating. I think they're having the Lord's Supper. From house to house. You didn't eat at every house you go to, but you could have the Lord's Supper every house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And then verse 47, the last verse of Acts chapter 2. You see it? It says, Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. When were, when were people getting saved in the, in the book of Acts chapter, every day? We should be getting people saved every day. Our church should. And you should be part of it. If you're saved, you should be getting other people saved. I try every day to get someone saved. I try to, uh, who was I talking with? I was talking with someone who works at Wawa. Like Peyton does. Another helper come out and talk about the Lord. But he, he uh, you see, getting saved, listen, I getting saved it's serious. It ain't just praying a prayer to get the preacher off your back. Listen. It's a contract. It's a commitment. Getting saved is the biggest decision you ever make in your life. Because you're going all in for God. April 4th, 1969. My wife and I. 19310 Glenwood Lane, New Berlin, Wisconsin. At my home. Two preachers came to our home. Reverend Brolo led us to Christ. He was a soul winner. And the other pastor's name was... Fill up something or another. They knew we were, uh, you know how they knew we were unsaved? I'd go to church, fall asleep. I didn't care about church. My wife, because we had little kids, you know, years ago, April 1969. And she says, honey, we ought to go to church because it's the right thing to do. Well, I went to church. But I was, get into it a few minutes and, I'll be looking at my watch, wanting to get, go home and get ready for the football game, huh? Eating and get my beer cool so I watch football game. Uh, I don't care much about it. But I got saved. Something got a hold of me. He praised God. Amen, Jilly Jones. Something about know. I wasn't like Billy Joe. He went there to fight. I didn't go to fight, but I just went because my wife wanted me to go. That was it. You ready to get serious about God? You know, you, we get serious about God. It ain't going to be about them. I'm going to come back at 6 o'clock for prayer meeting. We'll be here from now till then praying. You say, that's weird. It ain't weird. It's Christian. It's what they did in the Bible. It's what they did in the Welsh revivals. It's what Wesley did in England. They threw him out of the churches. He preached in the fields, huh? Come on. What's important to you? Why don't you get right with God and, and admit he's not first? You might be saved, but you're backslidden. There's people in here to get saved this morning. And people out there in the viewing audience need to be saved. There's preachers out there who need to get saved. You know, there's a lot of preachers. They're just in it for the money. Yeah. It's a job. I mean that. You got a job. Pastor of the church. Kind of prestigious, actually. People look up to you. 
get paid for it. That ain't what preaching is all about. Preaching is all about it. it's a God call. <coughs> Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such a who's gonna get saved today? Who's gonna come to an old fashioned altar? Pray. Who's coming? We're going to have an invitation. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have an invitation. I had to turn to that page. I'm going to find it again. Almost Persuaded, we're going to sing. Just As I Am is a good one, but I'm going to sing Almost Persuaded. Number 275, turn to that, 275. <clears throat> 275, grab your hymnal, turn to 275. Listen out there in viewing land, Facebook, YouTube. Invitation song, almost persuaded. Let's stand and close. Stand please to your feet. Almost persuaded now to believe. On the first, number 275, Philip P. Bliss. He wrote this song and wrote the music. He was D.L. Moody's song man. Almost persuaded now to believe almost persuaded christ to receive seems now some soul to say go spirit go thy way some more convenient day on thee I'll call. Number two verse. Almost persuaded. Come, come today. Almost persuaded. Turn not away. Jesus invites you here. Angels are lingering near. Prayers rise from hearts so dear. Oh, wondrous comes. Now here's the last verse. Let's sing it together, church. If you're getting a hold of it, sing it out there in the viewing land. Almost persuaded, harvest is past. Almost persuaded, doom comes at last almost cannot avail almost is but to fail some sad that bitter wail almost but lost look at me church look up here church look up here look just stand up man stay stand up david you can do it for a second or sit down that's okay sit. no no stand up no, stand, stand, stay stand up you don't want to leave you standing up? Michelle, stand up. You walk all day, you can stand no, up. No, I don't want to stand up. I stand up. <laughs> I want to stand up. Stand up. There you go. a girl. Yeah. Like Judge Judy said, this is my playpen. I make the rules, okay? Yeah. <coughs> Billy, you, Billy Joe stood up. He didn't have to because he's, he, he's kind of... That's okay. Leave for you guys sit down, just sit down, but he's he's in balloon condition. But listen. I've talked to hundreds, yay, thousands of people. They tell me I'm gonna get saved. 
I'm gonna come so I'm gonna come to church Sunday and get saved. I'm gonna get saved next week. I'll get saved tomorrow. And as far as I know, they never did. Almost but lost. I'm gonna tell you something. Almost on the couch in horseshoes. And someone else says, No, it ain't just in horseshoes. Close doesn't count. Almost doesn't count. You got to get a ringer. Almost doesn't make it. You got to at least get a horseshoe away from it. You get one point. You get a ringer. You get three, right? Well, the one point don't count. You got to get a ringer. You got to get saved. Now listen. We've sung the song. There's some people here in, in the church, and there's some people out there in, at YouTube that, that need to be saved. How do you, I don't, I don't know for sure if you need to be saved, but you know because God's talking to your heart. It's called the Holy Ghost. It's like what happened to me on April 4th. Anybody here in the church, you say, I, I, I really need to get saved today. Just raise your hand. Everybody in the church need to get saved today. Anybody at all? Yes. Just come forward. Just just come stand at the altar. Please. Just come stand at the altar. Come ahead. Praise the Lord. Raise Thank your you hand. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Just Thank come you, up. Lord. I have my father. Just come stand Thank at the altar. All right. Now, anybody else? Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful. God anybody else in the auditorium here? You that are out in the audience, you can repeat this with me. Peyton, you know, you said you're going to come to church and get saved today. She's here. This is the day. With a Bible in her hand and a cross around her neck. Amen. God bless. God bless the Lord. Yeah. It's pretty. But listen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Peyton, do you believe Jesus died for your sins on the cross? Amen. Would you be willing to trust not in this church, not in this preacher, not in what Peyton can do, but in Jesus Christ alone that, that he died for your sins and paid for your sins. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And he rose up the third day from the grave. He shed his blood on Calvary's cross and he rose up the third day. Yeah. Amen. Well, we're going to pray a sinner's prayer together. And anyone else in the auditorium want to pray it with us? Do it. Anyone out there in... The viewing audience, pray this prayer with us. The prayer says, I ask with the heart. The words don't say, but the heart does. Amen. Peyton, you're going to pray it. And it, other than the auditorium or those out in the viewing audience, let's pray together. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You died for my sins. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. You shed your blood on Calvary's cross. And you rose the third day from the grave. The best I know how. With an honest heart. I turn from my sins. Receive you. As my savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Yes. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Peyton, did you pray that in your heart? Did you mean it? I'm going to read you a verse from the Bible just before you sit down. And it's in Romans. And you can look at it when you, when you go back there and sit down and look at your Bible. In Romans chapter 13, right after the book of Acts is Romans. Romans chapter 10. I got carpal tunnel hand. It's hard to turn these pages. In Romans 10, 13, Peyton, it says this, Whosoever, that means Peyton, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, Peyton, what that means, if you with your heart mean it and ask Jesus to save you, believe that he died on the cross for you, shed his blood, and he rose again, and you're putting all your hope of heaven on Jesus alone, if you did that right now, it says you're saved, and saved people go to heaven. So where does the Bible, right, where does the Bible say you're going to go now if you die? 
Isn't that wonderful? What if you die 10 years from now? Heaven. Because you call upon him, right? It's forever, free gift. Forever. Amen. How about 20 years from now? How about 30 years from now? How about 40 years from now? How about 50 years from now? You see, Peyton, if things go the way things usually do, she'll still be alive 50 years from now. I'll be dead as a doornail. Man. <laughs> I'm living on borrowed time. That's okay. But if I die, I'm going to heaven. If you die, you're going to heaven. Thank God. God bless you, Peyton. Give, give the Lord a good hand for saving Peyton. God bless you, Peyton. Thank you, God. You may be seated, ma'am. You may be seated. Thank you. Wasn't that good? Yeah. God is good. I listen. I hope some of you people call me. My personal cell phone number is 386-679-0236. Call me if you got saved. Come visit us at church. We'll be here at 6 o'clock for prayer meeting this evening, 6 o'clock. Wednesday, 6 o'clock. And we're going to have, when the Holy Ghost breaks loose and we have revival, we're going to have service every day around here all day long. You say, that's crazy. No, that's real church. It's happened. In the Bible, it's happened around the world. It can happen here. God bless you for tuning in. Our next service is tonight at 6. Come visit us. 501 Ridgewood Avenue, Holly Hill. Thank God. Pray for Peyton. Got saved here this morning. And I hope some others got saved out there in the viewing audience. God bless you. Until next time.